of bills. All have been properly noticed and circulated electronically along with the copies of timely filed amendments and will be available to the, on the committee repository at docs.house.gov. Late amendments also are circulated electronically. Pursuant to committee rules, members of the committee may submit written opening statements for the, rec for the record, and I ask that members may revise and extend the remarks on the bills to be considered at this markup and have those remarks included in the record without objections, so ordered. Without objection, the chair may also declare a recess subject to the call of the chair. Pursuant to committee rule 3I and house rule 11, clause two, I should note, Mr. Westerman, that that particular little sentence there, uh, despite the fact that I've been running meetings here for, for the last few years, I have never been able to memorize that, and uh, I don't know why. Uh, I, <laughs> I announce that I may postpone further proceedings today on the question of approving any measure or matter or adopting an amendment on which a recorded vote or the yeas and nays are ordered. Documents, amendments, or motions must be submitted to hnrc.docs email from a house maintained email address. Please note that members are responsible for their own microphones and, may, and can be muted by staff only to avoid inadvertent background noise. Uh, another suggestion to, for the rules, Mr. Westerman, that I was never able to effectuate is on that last point, uh, maybe the taking out members can be muted by staff only to avoid inadvertent background noise and just leave it members can be muted by staff, period. And uh, uh, a, a, a rule change suggestion for, for your consideration. Uh, before we begin today, I would, uh, I wanna take time uh, to remember our friend, our colleague on this committee, uh, Representative Donald McEachin. His services were yesterday and uh, I wasn't able to attend because was, I wasn't up. Uh, I didn't feel as healthy as I should have uh, in terms I thought I was getting sick with the flu and didn't want to spread that around. Uh, and, but members went, staff went. I want to thank them for that. He was a very valued and respected uh, gentleman uh, in his place. Uh, Staff has put some flowers, and all I would ask today is that just in remembers uh, just a moment of silence uh, in uh, extending our our sincerest condolences to the family, friends, and staff of uh, Representative McEachin for their loss. With that, let me just take a moment of silence. Thank you very much. Uh, Ranking Member Westerman, and I understand you have an opening state, statement, sir, and with that, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And you know, Mr. Chairman, when we do away with the remote hearings, there will be no need to mute the uh, uh, members when there's background noise. You'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but before I do an opening statement, I would uh, I do speak for myself and my colleagues when I say that we were deeply grieved to hear the passing of uh, Congressman McEachin. Uh, I will also say it was an honor uh, to serve as the chair of the Oversight and Investigations Subcommittee with Don as ranking member. You know, he was a devoted advocate for his constituents, and while we didn't agree on much politically, uh, I always admired his uh, hard work, his ethics here in Congress, and the way he, he treated others even when he didn't disagree, or when he disagreed. Uh, you know, even when he was battling a horrible illness, Congressman McEachin uh, chose to do uh, so publicly in order to raise awareness for regular cancer testing. Uh, this courage is a testament to his selflessness. My prayers are with his wife, Colette, his children, his congressional staff, and all of us who mourn his tragic loss. Um, and Mr. Chairman, do you want me to do the opening statement now? or? That, if, if, thank you, Mr. Chairman. If, if, and, and I was remiss in not extend, extending the opportunity. And thank you, Mr. Westman, for your, for your words. Uh, any other member that wishes to 
address uh, Representative McEachin. Mr. Lowenthal, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, uh, Ranking Member, for those kind words about Representative McEachin. There aren't a lot of people that you consider a mentor or a teacher. Uh, Don McE uh, Representative McEachin really was a mentor to me and taught me a lot. He may not even have known that he was a mentor, but, but he was in that uh, I really learned from him that all legislation has to impact all those that are the, le that are the most vulnerable and really need a voice. And Mr. McEachin was a voice for those folks who really didn't have an opportunity for, to speak out. He wanted to make sure in all of our legislation, we took care to look at environmental justice and how that legislation was gonna impact those people who are the least able um, to uh, have the resources to deal with the issues that frequently we see that differ, that do not equally impact everyone. They impact lower income communities frequently the most. And Representative McEachin spoke out about that and I learned a lot and I respected him a great deal and I will miss him and thank you for this opportunity to say a few words. Thank you for that, Mr. Anyone else? Uh, Mr. Westerman, you're recognized for your opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am pleased to see that we're rounding out the year on a bipartisan note as each of these bills under consideration today have received support from both sides of the aisle. These are the kind of bills our committee exists for to support. They might seem like small wins in DC, but they are monumental for the communities that we represent across America. H.R. 8115, the Recreation and Public Purpose Tribal Parity Act, will give more flexibility and autonomy to tribal entities, allowing them to purchase or lease public lands. With millions of acres in the federal estate, this will be critical in ensuring tribal communities aren't prevented from accessing federal land in their backyards. H.R. 6427, the Red River National Wildlife Refuge Boundary Modification Act, would amend the boundaries of a waterfowl, waterfall fowl sanctuary in Congressman Mike Johnson's district, allowing for greater conservation of the many species that call the refuge home. H.R. 7615, the Lodge Act, would expand DOI's authority to enter into housing agreements for its employees. In my hometown of Hot Springs, we've seen public-private partnerships between local businesses and the federal government completely transform our national park. So it's exciting to see legislation that would build on successes like these and grant DOI more opportunity to work with local communities for the sake of their employees. Each of these bills represents hours of discussions with constituents, stakeholders, and those on the ground to learn what would be effective in managing our natural resources. They have each had a hearing, and I'm glad we are here today to pass them out of committee. Thank you, Chairman Grijalva, for your attention to these bipartisan bills, and I yield back. Thank you very much. And uh, let me uh, uh, let me thank you, Mr. Westerman, for uh, for the cooperation in uh, putting these uh, working out the the agreement on these twelve bills. Uh, and uh, before we begin, does any member seek time to speak on any of the bills in the unanimous consent package? If not, uh, as we've done before, I'll make a single UC motion to discharge the agree upon bills. I seek unanimous consent that the Subcommittee on Energy and Mineral Resources be discharged from further consideration of H.R. 3681 on, on sinkhole mapping, H.R. 5522, the Inventory Reform Act, and H.R. 7952, the Valley, Valley Forge Act. I ask unanimous consent that the Subcommittee on National Parks, Forests, and Public Lands be discharged from further consideration of H.R. 5522, the Inventory Act, H.R. 6032, Sacred Lands Act, H.R. 6611, the Jean Monnet Commemorative Work, H.R. 6720, the Thomas Paine Memorial, H.R. 7615, the Lodge Act, H.R. 8115, the Recreation and Public Purposes Tribal Parity Act. I also ask unanimous consent the Subcommittee on Indigenous Peoples of the United States be discharged 
from further consideration of H.R. 6032, Sacred Lands Act, H.R. 6964, the Tribal Leases Act, S. 314, the Clement Tribal Bill, and H.R. 8115, the Tribal Parity Act. Finally, I ask unanimous consent that the subcommittee, Water, Oceans, and Wildlife be discharged from further consideration of H.R. 7918, Sea Turtles Rescue Act, and H.R. 6427, the Red River Boundary Bill. Without objection, so order. I ask unanimous consent that the following bills be adopted and ordered favorably reported as described to the House of Representatives. H.R. 3681, H.R. 5522, H.R. 6032 with an ANS offered by Representative Huffman, H.R. 6427 with an amendment, uh, Grijalva number one, H.R. 6611 with an ANS offered by myself, H.R. 6720, H.R. 6964, uh, H.R. 7615 with an ANS offered by Representative Moore. H.R. 7918 with an ANS offered by myself. H.R. 7952 with an ANS offered by myself. And H.R. 8115 and S314. Without objection, so ordered. Without objection, the motions to reconsider are laid upon the table. And without objection, the long title of H.R. 661 is amended. All members will have two days to, uh, in which to file supplemental additional, uh, additional minority or dissenting views. I ask unanimous consent that the staff be allowed to make necessary technical and conforming changes to the measure ordered reported today subject to the approval of the minority. And I also ask unanimous consent that any measure ordered reported today without amendments that the bill be considered reported with an amendment to strike out all after the enacting clause and insert the text of the bill with this perfecting amendments adopted in committee. Without objection, so ordered. Thank you again, uh, Ranking Member Westerman and the other members of the committee for helping move this along. Let me, before we, uh, before we uh, end the meeting, let me uh, take a little time uh, to uh, acknowledge the retirement of uh, uh, some, some important and, and, and vital staff people from uh, the committee. Uh, David Watkins, uh, who has directed uh, the committee these last uh, four years, very capably so, came in at a, at a time when we needed a stabilization of, of the operation, he did that, and infused uh, uh, the committee and uh, with uh, a, a very a very young, diverse, and uh, sometimes overly energetic staff, but nevertheless, a very productive staff. And uh, and I want to thank him. I want to thank him for uh, his his help uh, in all the years I've been on this committee. Uh, we started out together in the same subcommittee. And uh, now he uh, goes to do other things. Uh, and he, do he does so with, uh, uh, with the respect and uh, the admiration of myself and many members and, and deep and sincere thank yous. Uh, Chris Como, who is uh, a friend and has been working on this committee uh, for 20 years uh, as well, uh, he leaves us to uh, try other things, uh, help develop the uh, consciousness around uh, indigenous people and the priority that we needed to put on that and has been a valued uh, advisor and friend of mine and uh, he moves on. And Nancy Locke uh, here in an education and, and labor committee has uh, kept uh, every chairman that I know of pretty straight and uh, educated us, taught us uh, about comportment and how to run a meeting. And I'm forever grateful for her professionalism and for her fine staff. Uh, I wanted to acknowledge those three individuals and uh, I consider all of them friends. Uh, with that, let me, uh, let me, if there's no further business, the committee is adjourned. Thank you. Oh,